سمي كليفي I'm Glyphix, and yes, I really have watched Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Crimes of Grindelwald, ten times. Now, the reason I'm making this video now, rather than, say, at the first time, or the fifth time, or maybe back when the movie was released a year ago, maybe it's a little a little relevant by this point. Eh, you know, debatable, debatable, but... The reason is that for the first time ever, I watched the first Fantastic Beasts movie last night. And all it has done is highlighted to me how bad of a movie Crimes of Grindelwald is. So, okay, I'm going to go a bit, I'll, I'll start off telling you why I've watched it 10 times. And then I'm just going to give you a couple examples about what makes the second one so bad compared to the first. But okay, so uh, me and a friend of mine, Ollie, have decided in the past to watch a movie 20 times. We did it first with uh, Night in the Museum 3. Now, we have a couple of rules for choosing our movies. So the first of them is neither of us need to have, uh, ha have to have not seen the movie. Secondly, it can't be a good movie, because then you're just going to ruin a good movie for yourself. And uh, thirdly, th there's some rules around the actual viewing. So we aim for once a week, and no phones allowed, no pausing, no rewinding, no fast-forwarding. It's just straight watching the movie. So we were inspired by a podcast, actually, called The Worst Idea of All Time, where they watch bad movies multiple times, more than 20 even. They do 50 or 100 watches of a movie. And that's kind of what inspired us to do this the first time. And with Night in the Museum 3, it's not a terrible movie. It's, it's actually even pretty good. And there's so much stupidity and kind of uh, jokey stuff in there that it just made it super entertaining. So, you know, it's been a couple of years now since we did that. And we thought, hey, that was fun. Let's do it again. Finally, you know, lots of, after lots of chats, we settled on Crimes of Grindelwald. Now, neither of us had seen either of the movies, but we knew the second one was renowned for being terrible. One thing we failed to check at the start was how long it is. It's like two hours, it's two hours, 13 minutes long, which incidentally is the exact same amount of time the first one lasts, which is weird. Yeah, so we, we've seen, we've watched it 10 times now, and we, we decided at the start, you know, after 10 watches, we'll see, we'll watch the first one as well and see if we can, you know, gain some more information from that. And I gotta say, watching it last night, I actually really enjoyed the first Fantastic Beasts movie. I know it's not, you know, grand cinema or anything, but, and maybe the badness of the second one played into it a bit, but overall, I genuinely enjoyed that movie. Watching the second one again right after, so the 10th watch was last night, oh, it just made it like so much worse. The reason that the second one is bad is it completely doesn't explain anything very well. It, it, it sort of over explains everything rather, but the storyline is so shallow and convoluted and basically all it comes down to is names. So it's quite difficult to keep track of names as it is, but they all have weird names in the Harry Potter universe, so it makes it even harder. To the point that there's a scene towards the end of the movie where we're literally just sitting, watching, having the whole plot explained to us. And this is three quarters of the way through the movie. But they're explaining it in such a roundabout way with loads of big reveals and twists that really aren't either of those things. And I'll get to that. That it, it's just impossible to follow. Literally the first three watches, we had no idea what was going on. Who's who, what's supposed to be happening, who we're supposed to care about and all that. Um, coming back, back to the, the twists. So the first movie, by the way, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. The first movie has a fantastic, well, okay. 
again, I'm I'm working in the realms of this isn't grand cinema and this is just a you know a blockbuster, easygoing movie. So you know, take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. Uh, it has this great twist towards the end that actually the guy who we thought was you know is he a bit bad? Is he a bit good? turns out to be Grindelwald, the big bad guy. He's basically Voldemort for these movies. He is. He's just Voldemort. That's all he is, basically. It, it was so kind of well done that it made complete sense, and we were both completely shocked, like, ah, oh my god, it's actually Grindelwald. Compare that to the second movie, where the twist... It, so it's all around this, this kid called... Uh, we call him Cadence. I think it's Credence or something like that. And the whole movie is is kind of about him finding his origins, but it's also not really about him. He's not even in it that much. And towards the end of the movie, we have this kind of thing where, where they're going, oh, you're a Lestrange. You're, you're a Lestrange's son. A second later, they reveal, no, 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 no. He's actually not Lestrange's son. Lestrange's son died. So it's like, okay, so... We spent this much time not knowing who he is. We find out who he is for about two seconds. And then we're told that's not who he is. Is that a twist? I don't know. And then right at the end of the movie, they go, oh, you're, you're Dumbledore's son. But by that point, we haven't really had any buildup. We've kind of had like no buildup. Hey, here's the big reveal. Okay. Big reveal's canceled. Oh, okay. And then a bit later on, hey, another big reveal. But by that point, we don't really care and we're just confused. So the first one, like, did it completely differently. It, it just completely made sense. Even at the start of the movie, they hint, they show a little bit of Grindelwald's blonde hair, which maybe you wouldn't actually know about unless you had watched the first one. But it was a bit kind of questioning like hmm blonde who is that you know it ma it makes sense in the context of the movie okay here's an okay i've got an i've got one more just fantastic example of how badly done the second one is and the only word to describe it is ham-handed there's a character called queenie who can read people's minds now in the uh, first movie there's this really nice scene with newt who's the main character and she's kind of reading his mind, but there's no voiceover. There's no, hey, this is what he's thinking. It's just all shown from her reactions. You know, she's saying, you cared about her, didn't you? That kind of thing. And you get what he's thinking from the context of what she's saying. Compare that to the same type of scene in the second movie where he, they literally have a voiceover of him going, stop reading my mind. You put a spell on him, didn't you? Which... I mean, for a start, makes no sense. He goes, you put a spell on him, didn't you? Stop reading my mind. Why are you directing questions at her in your mind when you don't want her to be reading your mind? It, I don't understand. It's like you're trying to have a conversation with her one-to-one, -one, but you don't want her reading your mind, so why direct questions at her? As well... The voice, they actually, they put this lame voice over to perfectly, just to explain and show what he's thinking. But he could have easily just said that out loud. He could have just said, you put a spell on him, don't, don't, didn't you? That's what he says in his mind. Just say it out loud. It's not like a secret. Whereas in the first one, it's like, okay, he's thinking that, you know, she's reading his kind of feelings about this, this woman that he lost or whatever. And, you know, he doesn't want to voice it because he's, it's very deep down feelings and, you know, all of that. And they don't spell it out. They just take it. You just take it from the context. Absolutely. By the way, as a side note, South Park does this all the time with Kenny. They, uh, Kenny, you obviously can't understand most of what he says. And they don't really spell it out. You know, often movies and, and TV shows, they'll go, mm -hmm. and then the other characters go, what do you mean you think that the pizza box is too old to save pizza in? They're kind of explaining it in a roundabout way exactly what he said. It's like he may as well have just said it. Whereas a lot of the time, anyway, in South Park, they'll just tell it from the reaction of the characters reacting to what he's said, even though we don't know what he's said, but we can get it from the context. It's a much smarter way of storytelling and script writing and all those things. It's so much more interesting rather than treating the audience like absolute babies and just spelling it out. I mean, I know it's a kid's movie, but 
they didn't do it in the first one, and the first one has the same audience as the second one. So I don't really get it. Okay, last point. The writers of the second movie, I swear, didn't watch the first or watched a completely different film. I, I don't understand it. So none of the, the consequences from the first one actually follow over to the second. And not only that, they actually wipe them out completely. So at the end of the first one, Grindelwald gets put into prison, okay? 30 seconds in, he gets out of prison, breaks out in the second movie. I mean, you gotta have a bad guy. All right, we'll let it slide. One of the main characters, the only muggle main character, the fat guy, whatever his name is, and yes, I have watched it 10 times, but it is very hard to follow a movie, so that's why I don't remember any of the names. He gets obliviated in the first one, meaning he gets his whole memory erased and he has no memory of anything magical. Five minutes in, they literally just go, oh, didn't work. Yeah, yeah, it didn't work. I, I, it sounds like I'm joking, but they li it literally goes, yeah, it didn't take, it only removes bad memories and I didn't have any. Hey, what? That's not how the spell works. That's stupid. What do you mean? You didn't have any bad memories? Like what? It makes no sense. Okay, and then the final thing is that the main guy everyone's trying to get in the first movie, which is uh, Cadence, Credence, he dies in the first movie. You see him explode and go, oh, it's so sad that he's dead. You know, we had started to kind of empathize with the character and sympathize. And he's, he's a good character. And he dies at the end of the first one. Five minutes into the second movie, oh yeah, he didn't die. Why? But what, what do you mean? Was there some magical cool thing that happened? You know, you know, like someone swooped in at the last moment or some weird spell we never heard. Mm, he just didn't die. Uh, okay. Uh... So what was the point of this whole thing? It could just be a standalone movie. Uh, it, it just, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Overall, don't watch the second movie. The first movie was actually pretty great. Uh, I recommend a uh, video style, uh, watching it with your friends kind of thing. Obviously, don't go out there and uh, around anyone's houses at the moment. You know how it is. But it's a bit of a fun watch and was overall a good movie. You can follow the plot. So that's saying something for the Fantastic Beasts franchise based on the second one. <sighs> anyway, uh, we're planning on watching it another 10 times. So um, maybe I'll come back and, and do this again after 20 watches. I mean, by that point, uh, I might be even more negative. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe. My name is Glyphix, and drop a like. I respond to all my comments. This is a random video. This isn't my normal content. What is my normal content? I don't know. Stick around and find out together. See ya.